So with 2023 coming to a close, uh, time is just an ever, uh, never wavering. It doesn't eat. It does not sleep. It continues to march on until all of us turn to skeletons. Uh, I'm going to talk about things I'm looking forward to in 2024. Uh, so this is like my most anticipated game list for the next year. A uh, couple of important disclaimers. N number one, stuff comes up. Uh, there's always going to be some cool surprise announcement or something that happens during the year that catches us off guard or, you know, a game comes out earlier than expected. I don't know. There's stuff I'm going to not talk about here because it doesn't exist yet or we don't know about it. Also, just looking at the list of games that's coming out next year, there's a lot. So I might miss something. So that's why I definitely want to hear from you guys in the comments too, like your list and stuff. Anyway, endless diatribe over. Let's talk about the games. Uh, the first one is an obvious one. I'm going to start out with uh, it's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is what, February 29th? So not too long of a wait, but I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, how the whole Final Fantasy remake change up goes. I'm still not going to totally spoil it because I actually know people that are still working through it, even though it's been a little bit. So uh, really, I just I'm curious to see like with, with Sephiroth off and like where the little changes go. Uh, also, the fact that Rebirth just brings a lot of those fun fan favorites, Sid, Kate Sith, Vincent Valentine. Uh, that's where I'm really excited to see the remake like take on those characters. It was fun in the first half, not going to lie, but I'm excited to see how it handles the, the crazier elements, the, the, the other section of Final Fantasy VII. There's a lot to cover. Uh, another one that I like just in like scrolling through websites and looking at like release lists for 2024, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 does come up on 2024 lists. I don't know what the deal is with that game. It seems like it's kind of been in development hell for a while. Uh, most recently, developers have said that it's on track, but there have been leadership changes, all types of things, delays for a long time. So is 2024 going to be the year where we finally see it? I don't want to rush them, but I hope so. Just because uh, more vampire games, always, please. Uh, also, like sexy vampire games, hot vampire games. Let's do it, dude. Uh, but also that it's just the right time for this type of game. Like, you know, a little bit more of like an immersive sim, fun vampire RPG. I think that's just what the doctor ordered. And if I can be playing it by next Halloween, I would be a very happy boy. And speaking of like horror spooky games, Little Nightmares 3. Little Nightmares 3 is slated for 2024. And I am curious about this one because Tarsier Studios, who made the first two, if that's how you say it, uh, they're not on this one. They got caught up in the whole Embracer Group thing, that goddamn publisher. So uh, Little Nightmares 3 is super massive, which ain't the worst thing in the world. Super massive is the people behind like Until Dawn, you know, in the Dark Pictures anthology and uh, most recently uh, The Quarry. So they, like it's like they can do the horror movie thing, sure. But I'm really curious to see how they apply their horror stuff to something a little quirkier, a little artsier, a little weirder, a little more charming thing like a Little Nightmares. But I love Little Nightmares 1 and 2 so much. I just love those types of games where you're just like a person in kind of like a 2D, 3D type plane just going on a linear adventure. Uh, so I I'm excited to see where this one goes. Now a couple of sequels. Uh, the first is Frostpunk 2. Dude, I love the first Frostpunk so much. And I always jo joke about how I don't like games that are like, like brutally challenging sometimes. But Frostpunk was brutally challenging, but from like a, a thinking man's way where like every single decision you made, uh, there were there were ramifications either way and you had to weigh the pro weigh the pros and cons. Essentially, it's kind of like a Snowpiercer type universe where everything is frozen and you're tasked with building out a little city, kind of like a Sim City or like civilization hybrid type thing with resource management and stuff. Um, but you're you're making harsh choices to keep people fed and keep them warm. And it is brutal. Every single choice you make is like, oh, yeah, you helped save the children. But now uh, everybody's going to go starving and they're going to eat the children. So way to go. You screwed up. The game has so many moments like that. So with Frostpunk 2, I'm hoping that that just continues. Uh, there's been some info out about it, but I just heard the teaser and that was it. I was like, I don't want to see anything. I'm just going to go in blind and have a good time. Just sit, up, sit back on the computer with like a glass of bourbon and just make poor decisions. You know, that's I like games like that sometimes. Uh, the other two on my list is Stalker 2. It's been a long time. The developers have gone through troubles, you know, in you know having their studio in Ukraine. So uh, it has been delayed, but it seems like 2024 is when we're finally going to see it. And I'm excited because the Stalker series has a pedigree for like kind of like older school, somewhat PC gaming. So I'm curious to see like what the new generation of that game is going to be. It also looks gorgeous and it just hits it scratches my perfect itch of post-apocalyptic stuff. Post-apocalyptic as a genre is broad. It's great, right? I just always have specifically liked like Eastern European, like Metro style 
post-apocalyptic stuff. And Stalker 2 definitely looks like a lot of that. Now, uh, another one, very interesting, is Rise of the Ronin, uh, specifically because, not because it's Team Ninja and because it's probably gonna have some Souls-like style gameplay. You know, other than Lies of P, I am so burnt out on Souls-like games, but like Lies of P, I'm attracted to this specifically for the setting uh, and everything they have going on here. It's like 19th century Japan with Western influence coming over and like it, just the setting, the buildings, the technology using guns and katanas like it just looks cool. Ever since we saw that first trailer with the guy like jumping out over the, the main street, the town uh, and you know with the with like the kind of like Wright brother wooden wings, I, I just thought that was really unique. Very iconic, very different. So that's why I've been paying attention to the game. The newest trailer just makes it look a little bit more like, yep, it's it's Team Ninja doing another thing, but there's a little bit more emphasis on story and I, I just wanna see what the deal is with this one. And at least we'll find out uh, it is slated for March 22nd as of right now. Now, another game uh, that I'm really excited for, you guys probably wouldn't expect this. Uh, it's, it's Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2. I'm gonna be totally, I'm so sorry. I don't know a lot about Warhammer 40K or anything, but I really, really liked Bolt Gun. Bolt Gun is incredible. Also, uh, I really liked the first Space Marine game. As much as I like went along and like I was able to learn some things, I just really love the gameplay and just like the broad setting. So looking at Space Marine 2, I think there was like a demo a while ago. I didn't play it. I just kind of want to go in completely. Uh, it seems awesome. It's it's like a badass space marine guy slaying hordes of monsters and creatures, and I'm just about that. Is this going to be the thing to finally get me to understand and, and, and kind of dive into Warhammer 40k? I don't know, but if I can kill stuff and be a cool badass dude, I'm in. Sometimes I'm really simple. Uh, one thing I want to highlight, and even if it doesn't come out, I, I think it's still important to talk about it. Uh, the Wolf Among Us was getting a sequel. The Wolf Among Us 2 uh, is a follow-up to Telltale's The Wolf Among Us based on the Fable, uh, Fable's graphic novel comic series. I loved that game and a sequel I was so excited for. And it's been this mythical weird thing that was announced a long time ago, then Telltale kind of like bleh, and then uh, it, Telltale somehow was kind of like reborn. And then it was like re-announced, if I'm remembering this all correctly. Uh, but as of right now, uh, the studio faced a bunch of layoffs in September. So it's kind of up in the air. Telltale did claim that the work is ongoing, but uh, apparently the layoffs were very significant. So I don't know if Wolf Among Us 2 is really going to be a thing and what the state of it really is, but I hope there's something out of it. But ultimately I hope the Telltale people land on their feet. Also, I'm gonna go out on a limb here with one I've been looking forward to because it was supposed to drop this October, uh, but smartly enough, they saw the October release schedule in 2023 uh, and they bailed. Uh, now it's coming out. Uh, like almost the end of the winter, spring. Uh, it's the Alone in the Dark new game. Uh, it's kind of like a reimagining of the original game. It's got Edward Carnby. Uh, it's got the haunted Louisiana mansion and everything. Uh, and David Harbour is Edward Carnby. And I just like David Harbour. I'm not like obsessed with actors or anything, but I always kind of just liked his everyman approach. And also he's like a legit gamer. So maybe he gives a shit. I don't know, probably, who knows? But the game itself, uh, I just want to see a revival of Alone in the Dark. It's the other like OG survival horror or just classic horror series, really. Um, and for it to maybe go back to its roots and, you know, kind of have a little bit of a Resident Evil remake framework now, I just think that's interesting. It could be not great. I don't know. You know, looking at the gameplay, looking at everything, I don't know for sure. So people could come back to this video and be like, Jake, you were looking forward to that game. You're an idiot. It's bad. Whatever. But... <laughs> I hope for the best. Uh, another one on my list is Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Uh, now, a lot of people were kind of disappointed that this isn't a full-fledged Prince of Persia game. You're not playing as the prince. This is kind of, for some people, just like a disappointing spinoff. But having played a couple of hours of it, like an early like alpha version of it uh, behind the scenes, I was about it. Um, I was genuinely surprised how fun it was. I kind of went into it a little cynical. I'm like, you're just keeping the brand alive, huh? No, it's really cool. They they busted their ass on the gameplay, the presentation. Uh, it's a lot of fun, kind of like a Metroidvania action, hacky, slashy thing with a really good sense of style uh, and almost like anime influences to a lot of the way the, the attacks and the special attacks go down. I think some people are really going to be surprised by this one. Also, some challenging boss battles. I don't know. I like Again, I would love just a new traditional Prince of Persia game, but if I'm not getting that, 
I'll take what I can get. And Lost Crown seems cool. I, I really hope it turns out to be good. Also, I don't know if it's 2024, but No Rest for the Wicked. That is the new game that was revealed at the Game Awards uh, from the people behind Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Uh, the art style, the kind of like medieval fantasy look to it, this isometric thing. I am just so about, um, not just because it's like an isometric, like hack and slash RPG type thing. Like that's, that's we've seen a million of those, uh, but really it was the presentation, the glimpses of cutscenes we got in that trailer, uh, just seemed on par with like what they did with Ori, uh, the Ori games. Uh, and I'm excited to see that in an, in a new setting. One that interests me a little bit more personally, Ori was, a gr they were great games, uh, but I like knights with swords killing stuff. Also a weird one that kind of got announced and people forgot it and don't get mad at me because I'm putting a remake on my list, whatever, dude. Um, Tomb Raider one and th one to three remastered. So Tomb Raider one, two and three, the OG PlayStation one games are getting like a re-release remaster uh, with overhauled graphics. Uh, and I just want to see what that's like. That's very weird. Uh, I never would have expected something like that because those games are so dated uh, and they're kind of keeping them structured similarly. Can I just lock the butler in Croft's, Cro in the Croft's mansion? That's that's all I really want to do, that creepy asshole. But um, that's like a kind of weird reference unless you've played those games. But yeah, I, I like OG Tomb Raider. I like original Lara Croft. I was, you know, about them putting her or like kind of OG Lara Croft in like Warzone. Like she's a Warzone skin. I don't play Warzone. I'm not gonna download it just for that, but like just seeing like a, a, a classic Lara character model, I was like, yeah, let's go. Also another one, uh, Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden. This kind of gives me like double A, almost triple A vibes. Um, and it seems like a cool action adventure where you're playing as this guy banishing souls, I don't know, doing whatever, but also aided by your wife, who is like also a dead ghost. It just seems kind of interesting. Uh, the last trailer they dropped for it was like a cinematic trailer and it was pretty cool, but the gameplay looks, you know, nothing like world changing, but I just like a good single player adventure to play through. That isn't an endless thousand hour open world RPG. Sometimes I like just a condensed good story and I hope Banishers can really be that. Another thing of course uh, is Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Number one, because I want to see what the deal really is with this game. I'm not playing the closed beta or alpha or anything like that. I want to go and just see the final product and judge it on that. Uh, but people have been playing it behind the scenes. I haven't really heard much, uh, but I am just looking forward to it because I hope it turns out to be good. I am as skeptical as most people are when they saw the gameplay here, but I'm still at least going to a little bit give uh, Rocksteady the benefit of the doubt and hope it turns out to be something great. And at the very least, I hope they can tell a damn good story within it. It's the last uh, performance of Kevin Conroy as Batman. That is very significant to me personally, uh, but also just seeing Rocksteady's take finally on Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, uh, John Stewart Green Lantern, um, you know, The Flash. There's a lot there and uh, I, I just hope it's good. I really hope it's good. I'm being cautious, of course. Again, I didn't like a lot of the stuff I've seen from some of the more recent trailers, but we'll see. I am optimistic to a fault sometimes. Some of you hate me for that, but whatever. I'm getting a little salty because I have a cold. I'm a little, uh, one thing I put on my list was just an X, uh, and that is for what I mentioned at the start. There's always gonna be some surprise announcement we don't know. Uh, maybe it's a Sony game, maybe it's a first party game, maybe it's an Xbox first party game or something else, or, or something smaller that comes out of the woodwork and blows people away. Maybe a Dave the Diver or a, a, you know, a Vampire Survivors or anything for 2024. I'd, I'd love to see that random thing show show up and blow us all away. Uh, but one other thing I did want to touch on for most anticipated is Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. Now it has a 2024 release date, that's it. Uh, they've been working on this one for a long time and it's gone dark for a while. It resurfaced at the Game Awards with a really cool trailer and I loved the first Hellblade game. I thought it was awesome. And seeing this trailer re and all of the gameplay that they've shown so far reiterates that at what they're doing with this one, what uh, Ninja Theory is doing, uh, there's nothing else really like this out there. Just the style, the grime, the grit, the nastiness of it. There's just something about the way, it's not even just like, ooh, pretty graphics. It's the actual style of it all that we just don't, we see it in, in movies, we've seen it in like Robert Egger movies, uh, but like all kinds of stuff, but not really in games. So that's why I'm excited. I'm also excited because I love the first game. And even the little glimpses of gameplay we got, makes it look like it's not too far off or too far flung from the original game. But the original game 
was a little bit smaller scale. It, you know, it, it was made by a smaller team with a limited budget, and you could tell here and there. So I'm curious to see uh, how Hellblade 2 goes down. I wonder if they've kept that mindset or if Microsoft threw them a ton of money and now it's a, you know, big open world game where she can like drive a car. <laughs> I don't know. I actually hope it doesn't go too big and crazy. I hope it keeps that similar focused mindset, tells a good story, and I hope it's awesome. But uh, those are my most anticipated games for 2024. So far, like I said, TBD, things are gonna, gonna be announced. I hope there's good stuff this year. I hope it's a good year for games because 2023 kicked my ass. There are so many good games out that I'm still catching up on. So let's see, let's see where it goes. So uh, the biggest thing is, this is a conversation, right? I, I wanna know from you guys in the comments what your own personal list is. Do you have a top five, a top 10? anything at all, um, you know, let me know what you think. There's probably gonna be some stinkers out there, but hopefully there are some winners. So I would love to hear your hopes and dreams in the comments. And if you like what I'm doing here, I'm just yapping about stuff I love. Clicking the like button helps me, thank you. But uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm Jake Baldino, subscribe because video games, pizza's on me.